would be a good day to take my honey uncapping tank. It has a bunch of drilled holes through the bottom and I really wanted to add some more. So I'm going to go through and add some more. I thought I was. <laughs> I'm going to have to go recharge this battery some more. We about doubled our holes. Mommy, it's snow on it. Mother, but there was one. It's snowy today. Oh no. Yeah. Ten degrees too warm to snow. Snow. Oh. Hi everybody and welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am headed out to feed some animals. I've got some hungry pigs and some cows that are mooing. And that is the sound of my reminder that hunting season is once again upon us. So we're just heading out, feeding the animals, getting done what we need to get done. I've noticed the last week or so a lot of country driving and parking going on in the neighborhood. We've got the North Field just over this way and we've got the waterway that goes right up to the road and the deer come out of the woods, munch on the hay over in the waterway and deer hunters just sit there, people driving around. Somebody's getting in a lot of target practice pretty close by. Yeah, <laughs> I think I have an idea where it's coming from. So one of our neighbors thought it smart to go hunting in the field across the road from us last year, the year before. And his hunting venture that he brought along some co-workers didn't turn out so well for him. Turns out the property owner didn't have permission granted for anybody to be hunting. And the caretaker called the police out and all three of them had their firearms seized for doing goose hunting. So not a good deal. It sounds like he must have gotten his firearms back or purchased himself something new. Bad deal. Our state's pretty firm on making sure that you have permission and that you're not trespassing on land and that you have your proper hunting permits and licenses for any kills that are taken. I had a family member that was fishing off a bridge at one point without a license and even with our even with our Native American history they said no that's not good enough it's still fishing and you need a license and they seized all of his fishing equipment bad thing so if you're getting ready to head out make sure you have permission make sure you've got your license so you don't get in trouble and cost yourself some money Remember earlier when I was talking about it being the beginning of hunting season? I was picking up sticks back here by the bees. Look at this. That is a good sized buck rubbing on that. He's got that bark shredded right off of this tree. That poor little tree. The health of the tree. That's about, geez, two and a half, almost three feet of a rub. And where he stopped rubbing. Look at that, all the way up here, got into it. He was really, really having an itch to rub on that. So I just wanted to come out and check on the bees. There were some branches down on the lane and there's, that's where I was showing the oak trees. They're coming out and eating those acorns every day. So I just wanted to check on the health of the beehives because it was so wet the other day and I had, 
they had days where they weren't able to come out and fly from the rain it basically was a week of gloom and rain and cold so it finally warmed up a little bit yesterday and today and they're out flying a bit they really wanted to come out and open them up and george's nap was a little long and see oh that is terrible we've got to get in there and see what's going on i was afraid of that because i saw too many dead bees and the cold they just can't handle an attack with the wax moth so that's that's looking bad and we'll get in there and see what's going on but that hive is likely done oh shoot just a couple of days it just makes a difference these things happen so you just keep growing them see what you can do with this hive and I had to combine a hive here with this so if that's you know anything left there they're gonna need some help all right out of all these busy things today I've got to see what is going on with this beehive because I don't think it's gonna be great news I smoked the hive and just to show you kind of close now that I'm bee suited up there's a lot of dead bees here and some crawling bees now they'll kick out the drones and get rid of them, but there's a lot of bees here. That was a hornet right there. Uh, hornets and wasps will actually start to rob their hives. And you know, they could have died in a battle, but it looks like there's a lot of bees up here in the top. So, probably not a great idea to do that for the bees, but the hornet's gone. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a little more smoke. I was able to put a stick in there last night and knock a lot of dead bees out. I was worried that if there was live bees, then the entrance might be blocked. are a lot more uh, physically active than this so I'm just not real sure what to think is going on here
up here and they're moving too slow to be working. There is a little bit of drawn wax. See, they're just staying close together. It's not that cold out. Many dead bees. So something's definitely not right here. No food that I'm seeing on top. We're gonna look in these frames in the bottom. Um, I mean, look at that. That's just terrible. I stuck a stick in the front here. I'm looking to see if I can see any mites or mite droppings. I see some wax and. Some bees but see these are just a lot of them are wiggling 
There's a couple of ants. If you look, sometimes you can see deformed wings, and that's a sign that uh, they are damaged from varroa mites and weren't able to go out and collect. You see, like here is a this is a bee that they've pulled out of a cell and started it. And it could be that the entrance got so plugged they can get dysentery, their stomachs um, basically get sick and they die. So I'm going to clean this off. Just, I've never seen a hive fail like this before. Um, if any of these are going to make it, which they probably wouldn't, there's lots of. I don't see signs of dysentery as far as them having feces all over anything. There's some like untapped rats. This hive has been doing great for a while, so I just don't see a reason. I don't see a reason yet. Checking the hive stand. back on here. I never set my boxes directly on the ground. gave off. Hey, you're 
drawing here and pop it.
I had to feed the other beehives that were split from earlier this year by giving them some frames of honey. The weather had turned pretty wet and bad for too long and that had been keeping me from getting out to the bees. So the last time I was out there, one of the hives had a drone laying worker. Uh, the queen was not there anymore. So the next hive that I got into today, um, I noticed that they were very low on food stores and it's because the weather was bad and they hadn't been able to get out and start um, filling their reserves. They, there's no way they would have made it till winter. So even if they had had food today, um, they didn't have enough to get them through. So basically, since they ha didn't have enough food today, they weren't gonna have enough food at the end of the month either because they didn't have drawn out wax in the upper box that I had given them. So they weren't meeting that. They haven't been multiplying enough because they didn't have enough food. So the queen stopped laying. Um, they gotta have enough food to feed themselves and to feed the baby bees. So because the weather had turned bad and they were late splits, I really should have been feeding them sugar water or giving them honey uh, a couple of weeks ago. And really, I kind of dropped the ball on it and should have been watching a little closer. Um, the queens that are there in the existing hive splits have been laying eggs, but there wasn't as much capped brood, which tells me there was a break in the cycle. Um, a break in the cycle can be a good thing because then you don't have varroa mites hiding in those um, uncapped larva cells feeding on the baby bees that are developing. Um, also, they tend to go after the drones and there wasn't a lot of drone brood in there, but if it's a drone laying uh, worker, you can get into that. So one hive did have more hive beetles than I'd like to see. So we're gonna have to do a treatment with that. Um, we're doing everything natural and you know, it doesn't always work. So I'm gonna do a little homework on that tonight because I'm not liking how many there were. I had to take some honey out of that hive to give to one of the nucleus hives. And you know, the goldenrod is finishing up. We haven't had our first frost yet and I'm not seeing as much goldenrod standing around as I would like. The last thistle isn't um, blossoming out and we have plenty of clover blossoms out in the field. The alfalfa looks like it's done blossoming. So that clover is the last and it's the hardest to get because it's mostly red clover that I'm seeing. So, we will get some feeders on there and give them some of the honey rather than harvest it off because that's much better nutrients for them. More of a complete nutritional diet instead of just sugar and water than me feeding them on their own. The advantage of me feeding them sugar water is that I can give them essential oils to help treat things. Um, you can actually even put uh, tea tree oil and peppermint oil and things like that in the hive. So with feeding them syrup, sugar water, you know, it's a good way to get them any thing that they need. A lot of times this time of year, people are giving treatments for uh, varroa mites to make sure that the number loads are really low going into winter because you've got to have good healthy bees. So we're going to do what we can. I'll do a little homework tonight, but I had to kind of wrap it up for the night because my husband needed my help with the tractor and I didn't get my honey stores off, but it looks like I've got about four to five boxes of honey to take off, depending on how much honey I want to feed these other bees. So you don't want to go into winter having welfare bees, bees that are, are dependent on you, but they're gonna need some help. So I'd rather give them the honey and get them built up and kind of have my heads up for next year on giving them a little more food and feeding them. So. That's it for today, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.